Welcome back. In our segment, Midcap Spotlight, Sonal, you're looking at Gujarat Fluorochemicals. Yes, the stock is up 4%. It is making a strong rebound today. There's an initiating coverage by uh, Investec. Now, the company makes fluorochemicals and which also is used in pharmaceutical industry. There's refrigerants that it makes. So, a lot of segments which the company caters to as well. Uh, Investec has initiated the coverage with a buy and target price of 3,450 rupees per share, uh, which versus the previous uh, market price was around an 18% upside. Now, the company, according to them, has monetized its strong fluoropolymer uh, development capabilities. They're looking at vertical integration development as well. This timely capex that the company has done through the years to ramp up their business as well. Their, one of their segments, which is new fluoropolymer, it has been the fastest growing segment for them. Uh, it's up around 16% on a CAGR basis, and they expect the trend to continue as well for the company. It is a market leader in PTFE as well. It has global market share of uh, less than 10%, but of course, um, and that is a good number in the global markets as well. The PTFE uh, segment contributes 30% to sales. It will continue to grow at a steady pace, according to Investec. Company is also using its fluorine chemistry skills to make battery chemicals, and that will make it the second company or the only two players in the battery chemicals market. So that is something that will aid profits for them. They are forecasting 26% EPS CAGR, and that is actually lower than the consensus. So still, um, they are conservative versus what the consensus estimates are, but they are bullish on the stock. And the, on the back of that, along with the other chemical players, we are seeing a big up move in Gujarat Floro as well. Mm. Even agrochemical companies are doing well, right? Uh, <laughs> is there, again, a brokerage note? There is, actually. So there is uh, a note by uh, Antique, and they talk about channel checks suggesting that domestic industry has witnessed double-digit YY revenue growth from April to August, in which April to June were really weak quarter, uh, was a really weak quarter. Until August, we've not seen like the best of rainfall as well. Despite that, they have been able to see double-digit growth. As monsoon activity picked up in July 23, uh, they saw it offset the lull that was seen in June. But again, in August, we did see a decline. For export-oriented players, the slowdown is expected to continue in the near term. Prices in both the export and domestic markets, they have actually settled down and showing signs of revival, which is very important. They believe the worst is largely over for domestic players and they expect bounce back in performance in second quarter itself. They expect revival may take time in the export markets, possibly in second half of FY24 for export players. Um, so these are the two views that they have on the domestic and export markets. For UPL also, there's a positive note by HSBC. Uh, so yes, looking good for them from that perspective because HSBC says that despite whatever they're seeing, there will be a recovery from third quarter and their balance sheet is not something that is stretched. Uh, but the only risk that they have is the weather conditions and also if they make any unfavorable acquisition, uh, that is something that would stretch them further. Okay, but for now, their base cases, Q3 yeah. onwards, things start looking uh, better. That's correct. Uh, let's get to 